اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا ما لکم اذا قیل لکم انفروا فی سبیل اللہ ساقلتم الى الارض ارضیتم بالحیات الدنیا من الاخرہ فما متاع الحیات الدنیا فی الاخرت الا قلیل الا تنفروا یعذبکم عذابا علیما و یستبدل قوما غیرکم ولا تضروه شیعہ واللہ على كل شيء قدیر الا تنصروه فقد نصره اللہ اذ اخرجه الذین کفروا ثانی اثنین اذ هما فی الغار اذ يقول لصاحبه لا تحزن ان اللہ معنا فانزل اللہ سکینته علیه وعیده بجنود لم تروها وجعل کلمة الذین کفروا السفلا وکلمة اللہ هي العلیا واللہ عزیز حکیم صدق اللہ العظیم رب اشرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لقدتم من لسانی یفقہو قولی Now from this ayah number 38 till the end of this surah it's a long discourse which revolves around the غزبت التبوک because actual fighting didn't take place so we can't call it غزوہ also but it can be called expedition the journey of تبوک And these are 11 sections of this surah. Some of these ayat were revealed before the commencement of the journey. Some, as I told you before, during the journey, going towards Tabuk, coming back from Tabuk. Then because the Prophet ﷺ, the Muslim, stayed there at Tabuk for about two or three weeks, I'm not sure at this time. So some of the ayat were revealed there. And then, you know, some of the ayat were revealed after his coming back and reaching Medina. Now, what is most important about this ghazwa or the journey of the expedition is, as I told you, regarding the philosophy of the deen, this represents the initiation of the process of the Baisatul Amma, or you may call it the exportation of the Mohammedan revolution, alayhi salatu was salam. It began, as I told you, in the year 7 of Hijrah, when the Prophet ﷺ wrote letters to Heraclius, to the emperor of Iran, to Maqaqas of Egypt, to Nagus of Abyssinia, and to chiefs of Bahrain, and so on and so forth. Now, one incident occurred. That is, a letter was sent to Shurahbil bin Abr, he was the king of Ghassan under the Roman Empire, a tributary to the Roman Empire, but so to say, a, 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 a king in himself, the chief of that area of tribe. The Prophet ﷺ sent him a letter also. And Hazrat Haris ibn Umayr Azdi, Razi Allah ta'ala anhu, was the emissary. He took the letter. This fellow, Shurahbil bin Amr, he killed the emissary, the messenger of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, this was an offensive act. It was a challenge to the state of, of Medina, you may call it. Of, now, it was not of Medina only. It was the whole of Arabia now, nearly. So, the Prophet sent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an army of 3,000 of companions to take the revenge. Now, when this army was sent, Heraclius himself, the Roman emperor, was present in Syria. He sent an army of 100,000 people to confront this army of 3,000 only. Another 100,000 were present as a support. So, when these people reached, and it was under the command of Hazrat Zayd ibn Harissa, radiyallahu ta'ala, when they came to know that we have to confront 100,000 people. It's the ratio of 1 to 33 already. And if you know another 100,000 can be added, it becomes you know, 1 to 66. So should we have a confrontation or we should retreat? So most of the people said, no, we need shahada fi sabirillah. Victory or no victory, we must go and, you know, 
confront them. So this was the battle of Muta, which was fought in the, the month of Jamaat al-Ula in the eighth year of Hijri. Now, when the battle started, there was no, you know, comparison. Hazrat Zayd ibn Harsa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he was martyred. Then the command, the Prophet had already said, if Zayd ibn Harsa, he falls, then Hazrat Jafar ibn Abi Talib, a cousin, cousin the, the elder brother of Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Then he had to take the command, he took the command, he also fought and he also was martyred. Then according to the instruction of the Prophet ﷺ, Abdullah ibn Rawaha and Ansari from Medina, radiyallahu anhu, he took the command, he was also martyred. Then you know the Muslims themselves, now all the three whom the Prophet had nominated, they had been martyred. So now the Muslims decided themselves over there to make Khalid ibn Walid their chief. And he then somehow, by some maneuvers, he could go, who could take them back, you know, and they reached Medina. So this was, in a way, it was a very big success also, to have come back safe out, you know, after confronting 100,000 people. But in a way, it was a defeat also. Now, because Heraclius now became, you know, conscious of the threat to his empire from the south, so he began amassing more army and preparing because, you know, this, this could be the soft underbelly, as you call it, of the Roman Empire. If there was a thrust from the south, so you know, the, the whole empire, you know, that could be affected. This, these news were reaching the Prophet also. So he now prepared an expedition, decided to go himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is now called the expedition or the Ghazwa of the book. Two things are very peculiar. And they were, you know, for the first time, these things were, these steps were taken. Number one, the target was absolutely declared clear. We are going to confront Rome. So that it should be clear to all people where they are going. They should know it beforehand. Number two, that... Every moment has to go. This is the first and the last occasion during the whole lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it was made obligatory for every Muslim, compulsory. You may call it general mobilization in the modern terminology, but every Muslim had to go. So actually, this expedition of the book, the Prophet went there with thirty thousand of companions, and he stayed there. Heraclius knew that this army has come. But because he had already recognized that Muhammad is the Prophet of Allah, and he knew it, I can't confront him. So he held back, he didn't come forward. And the Prophet stayed there for about two or three weeks, about 20 days as far as I can recollect. And during this period, you know, he accomplished something which I will give you later on. And then he returned. But you know, what were the, the accomplishments of this journey? Number one, the Prophet showed to the Roman Empire that Islam stands undaunted, not to be cowed down, ready to have a confrontation with the Roman Empire. It was the Roman Empire which, you know, receded back. They had dinner come just like Mota. Because in Mota, the Prophet himself was not present. But it was Tabuk now, the Prophet ﷺ was himself present and he knew, Heraclius, that if I confront him, I'll be defeated. So, number one, you know, this morale of the Muslims and this new state, Islamic state in the Arabian Peninsula, the morale of its citizens and all the Mu'minin, you know, it rose high. Number two, when this Prophet stayed there for about two weeks or three weeks, he made treaties with all the tribes of that area so that the borders of that Islamic state were become secure. So that was the second accomplishment that he got. The third was that through this expedition of Tubuk, the Prophet made the Munafiqeen 
absolutely exposed and he took a stern action against munafiqeen after coming back liquidation of munafiqeen that was the third accomplishment of this because when it was made clear that every momin has to go whosoever didn't go he became apparent although there is something which we shall read inshallah that they came and they and they got the leave of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam due to some lame excuses but you know but it became apparent who are they and then you know their conspiracy that they had built a mosque as a center for their conspiracies the prophet when he came back the prophet he was commanded by allah subhanahu wa taala to burn it down and to put it down so that was a very big blow and according to some traditions the prophet also identify about 30 of them and you know he called by names such and such son of such and such should stop to to stand up and leave our place so this is the only incident in the whole life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he did identify certain munafiqeen made them apparent and known to the public to the muslims to the mu'mins that such and such people are munafiqeen not all of them but some of them but you know this this season in which this expedition was being undertaken was very unfavorable hottest days of the arabian peninsula then you know there was dearth of you know food and now the harvest of the date that was ready and there was danger if it is not harvested at proper time it will also decay because you know harvesting the dates is not an easy job women cannot do it going up you know the the high stem of the date palm and then taking the dates from there so if no men were to remain behind to harvest the, this crop it would also go to waste so all types of you know hard trials and tribulations and tests they were gathered together for the second time during this madani period the first time is ghazwatul ahzab hardest test the moments the this is this hizbullah was put, put to the hardest test during that also and rather more hard now because now people know we are confronting the roman empire up till now there was you know in sort of infighting between the tribes between the people of arabia only but now an established superpower of the time because at that time also incidentally there were two superpowers the empire of iran and the empire of rome and you know sometimes the romans advanced and they captured some area from the iranians and on another occasion the iranians advanced and captured some some area the syria and some part of turkey from romans this was happening for the last 600 years or so the, the history was you know hanging a seesaw you know play was going on between these two empires the roman empire on the one hand and the iranian empire on the other hand that is why we find you know in surah al rom in quran alif lam mim ghalabat al rom fi adna al ard wa hum min ba'd ghalabihim sayaghlibun so that is an incident which has been referred to in quran also so actually these were the conditions in which nifaq came out it became apparent munafiqeen could be identified plainly so this was the third accomplishment of this expedition of tabuk